Looking for magic cards? Shop at Flipside Gaming using promo code LVD or find them on TCG Player through my affiliate link. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena Games video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-black flash deck in standard as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. And of course the centerpiece of the deck is Slitherwisp from Ikoria, a 3-mana three 3-2 three elemental nightmare with flash, saying whenever you cast another spell that has flash, you draw a card and each opponent loses one life. Of course the card draw is the main reason we're interested in Slitherwisp, but you would be surprised at how quickly the life loss can end the game, especially if you get two copies in play. And then another exciting addition is the Cunning Knight Bonder, 2 hybrid Demir mana for a 2-2 human rogue with flash, saying spells with flash you cast, cause 1 generic mana less to cast, and can't be countered, which can be relevant in a mirror match. And then we also have the full playset of Heartless Act, another new printing from Ikoria, a 2 mana instant speed removal spell that can destroy target creature with no counters on it, or can remove up to 3 counters from target creature, doesn't come up a whole lot, but you never know. And then, uh, of course, a nice curve topper for the deck that we get is a Voracious Great Shark, 5 mana for a 5-4 Shark with Flash, and when the Shark enters the battlefield, counter target artifact or creature spell. I've even countered a Great Henge with this, which feels pretty good, and just gives the deck a nice big body that can maybe ambush smaller creatures, which the opponent might not expect. So these are some of the new printings from Ikoria, and uh, then the Seed Dasher Octopus, I guess, is the last one, a 3 mana 2-2 two -two Octopus with Flash that mutates for one and a blue, and whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. So you ideally want to mutate this onto a small flying creature like the Spectral Sailor, or uh, maybe a Brazen Borrower, so you can repeatedly hit the opponent and draw some extra cards. And then with the Night Bonder, even the mutate ability only costs a single blue mana to play, so you can kind of have your instant speed Curious Obsession, which of course is a very powerful effect. So let's take a look at the rest of the deck. At one mana we've got our full playset of Spectral Sailor as just the cheapest flash creature we can play that will uh, draw cards with our Slither Wisp, a great target for the Sea Dasher Octopus as well. Then at 2 mana we've got the Brineborn Cutthroat, still a great staple in these flash decks as a 2 mana 2-1 two Merfolk Pirate with flash, and whenever we cast a spell during an opponent's turn put a plus one plus one counter on the Cutthroat, which can also get out of hand pretty quickly. We've got our Night Bonder, then we get to our Counterspell department. You can play a variety of Counterspells in this deck. I decided to just focus on these cheap 2-mana Counterspells, with a Negate being one of them to counter target non-creature spell. Since we have Heartless Act and Brazen Borrower to deal with opposing creatures, I mainly wanted to focus on Counterspells that could handle non-creature threats, so of course Negate makes a lot of sense. Then we also have two copies of Quench, which counters target spell unless its controller pays 2, so still has the flexibility of countering both creatures and non-creatures, and then we also have two copies of Tails End, which is a bit more experimental, but I'm trying this out as a way of countering both Teferi early on, which of course is a card we don't want to see resolve, as well as maybe countering a more expensive companion later in the game. And then we have our uh, Heartless Act, we've got Brazen Borrower as a 4-off, which can first bounce an opposing a non-land permanent with Petty Theft, and later gives us access to a 3-1 Flyer with Flash, which plays quite well with the rest of the deck got only two copies of the octopus, since ideally we do want to put it on the sailor or maybe a brazen borrower, so we don't have that many targets for the uh, mutate ability, but you could easily build a deck with more flying creatures in it where you want to max out on the octopus instead, maybe even a mono blue version where you forego the slither wisp and kind of just play more as this mono blue tempo deck with more ways of protecting your own creatures as well, maybe starlet mantle could play well with the night bonder too. So there's a few ways you could approach it. And then of course our four Slither Wisps and two Voracious Great Sharks. And then taking a look at our mana base, we're playing a total of 26 lands, which might seem like a lot for a deck with a relatively low curve like this, but we don't really want to miss any land drops with this deck, especially once we start going off with the card draw from Slither Wisp or Octopus. And we always have the Spectral Sailor as a nice mana sink if we start flooding out a bit. And also we do need double black for Wisp and double blue for a variety of spells. So by playing more lands we also help that out. So we've got 8 Islands, 8 Swamps, 4 Temple of Deceit, 4 Watery Grave and 2 Fabled Passage. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with uh, decent looking hands. It is interesting with Night Bonder and Cutthroat, because on the one hand you want to play Night Bonder to get a 1 mana Cutthroat, but on the other hand you want to play Cutthroat first to get the plus 1 plus 1 counter. I think I'm gonna have to bottom Great Shark 
because if you don't draw a land afterwards, it's gonna end up being a little clunky. Although it is nice with a discount from the Night Bonder. Green White, Season of Growth. Yeah, I think I'm gonna have to quench that. Because this is on casts. So even if we counter their future spells, they would still get to draw cards. Although you could make the argument that we can just counter their creature that they try and enchant or target, and then we're fine as well. But we've got Heartless Act to kill their creatures, so... So, end of turn. Don't hate going Night Bonder into Cutthroats. And then... I guess we'll just Heartless Act the champion right now. I do miss out on the counter from uh, Cutthroats, but I don't risk my opponent uh, messing it up by putting a counter on the champion. And I can attack. And now we get to play a nice tempo game where we're ahead on boards. We've got some interaction to remove the opponent's threats. Another champion, sure. Think we'll start by bouncing. Then next turn I can play two mana Brazen Borrower as well as play Heartless Act. And our opponent's just gonna scoop it up just too far behind. We even drew the Slither Wisp, which was gonna be quite good here as well. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a nice hand. Facing Obosh. Now they can still play Bonecrusher Giants, so they can still stomp for two mana. It's gonna be a Cauldron Familiar, sure. Don't expect to need three mana here. Could block and play another Cutthroats, but I think I want to keep up the option of casting a counter spell first. Voice Rider, yeah, that's annoying enough. And while I could Brazen Borrower it, I don't want to give them the Goat Token. Probably gonna keep the Brazen Borrower to bounce Obosh, is my guess. Or if I draw a land for Great Shark, I could just counter it. Light up the stage, so now we can go Cutthroat into Negates. Let's see if they have another play lined up. And there's a land, perfect. So might be able to Great Shark something. Claim the Firstborn. Can't counter that. Sure. Witch's Oven I can also counter with a Great Shark, if that's their plan. They can't play Fling, because they can't play even mana costs. Ooh, I see. Weaponize the monsters. That I can't counter. So I guess I want to just bounce my own Cutthroat then.
And a Chandra Acolyte of Flame. Alright. Tails Ends could also come in handy, can counter the ability from weaponizing monsters, which could be clutch. Do we just go face here, or do I send Cutthroat at Chandra? Chandra plus weaponize is kind of scary. I mean, they're probably just going to chump with the familiar anyway. But I guess I'll do this. Could also counter Chandra's ability in the first place. We'll see. Act of Treason. I guess that's fine. Can't counter the Act of Treason. Now, the sacrifice I wouldn't be able to prevent, but I can counter the two damage that the monsters deals with Tail sense, so I could go cut through it into tail sense, but then I can only hit them for six, which is not quite enough. But uh, yeah, I guess it happens. Opponent is empty handed. They could minus Chandra as well to get a spell back from the graveyard. Hits us for five, that happens. So we'll go cutthroats into tail sands. And then we should be able to kill Chandra here with our attackers. And then we've got the Great Shark to counter both Obosh or maybe a Strider that they're trying to escape. Next time, toast. Yeah, because they have enough cards in graveyards. And hopefully that's game. Alright, sweet. Nice interactive game against the Ragdo Sacrifice deck. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. Decent hands. We have yet to see Slitherwisp in action, so hopefully we'll draw one soon. Don't think I need Night Bonder right now. Sultai, turn to Thought Erasure. Probably just gonna run out to Night Bonder this turn. And then for now, play Temple, look for a Wisp or some other payoff. Quench could be okay. They took away the Quench earlier. But I might need it this turn. For like a Nissa. But I guess I could Brazen Borrower and then counter on the way back. Alright, I'll keep a Quench. No Nissas this turn at least. Hydroid Crace is another problematic card for this deck. But we can always just kill it with the Heartless Acts. Is that what I want to do here? Don't really want to bounce it. Yeah. 
remove three counters, which basically kills it here. And then I'll play this untapped. Do I? I guess I could play Swamp. Because, yeah, I might want to just play Brazen Borrower and play Quench or Bounce and Quench. The life could matter, so. Even though they know about Watery Grave, I'll uh, do it this way. So if I just run out to Brazen Borrower, I apply the most pressure. Next turn I can Flash and Sailor draw cards. Is that how we want to play this game, or do we want to keep a Borrower to maybe bounce something? Could be good against Uro. Yeah, this is tough. I think I'm gonna just play it out. Don't want to see another Hydroids, and that's exactly what they have. Really gonna need that Slither Wisp now to pull ahead. Tails and also could have countered the uh, trigger from the Krasis, but now it's too late. So yeah, not much uh, I can do here. Guess we'll just pass. And there's Uro. Sure. Can just counter Uro if they escape it. Jace Wheeler of Mysteries. I guess I kind of want to counter that too. See what we draw with the Sailor first. So we could go on a bit of a beatdown plan with the Brazen Borrower. Is that going to work? Porn can play Krasis for like 6 next turn. Gain 3. Maybe it's my best bet. Just kind of lock them into replaying Krasis instead of maybe playing Uro. It looks like they are escaping Uro here. That happens. So I could flash in my two creatures, or I could start drawing cards with Sailor instead. Probably better to flash in the creatures for now. More Brazen Borrowers, that's good. Alright. Got them pretty low. Hopefully no sweepers. That is a sweeper. So, I can still end of turn play the Borrower, but they're probably going to play Krasis 2 here. So, maybe I'm better off just drawing with the Spectral Sailor. I mean, at this point to win the game I need to like hit Slither Wisp into another Slither Wisp pretty much. Don't think this Brazen Borrower is going to get across the finish line. 
so close to casting this negate. Too bad uh, Night Bonder doesn't discount instance. Would be a little bit too good otherwise. Alright, there's a Wisp. Step one. I was kind of thinking of maybe just flashing this in now, but maybe I want to keep him negate. So maybe I shouldn't have showed them the Wisp right away. But if I hit my land drop, then I can still keep him negate. So maybe we're desperate enough to do that. Sure. Alright. Great Shark could be pretty useful too. Yeah, that was the reason to wait until end of turn. But if we did draw the land, to be honest, we would have been able to negate and have both creatures in play, which would have been pretty strong. Alright, Great Shark, help us. This is a point where I wish I had a couple castles in the mana base too. Doesn't often get to this point of the game. Usually the game is decided by this point. They can escape Uro once again. Another casualties. Alright. I guess casualties would have uh, destroyed our castle anyway. Again, main phase it, because if we hit our land then we could have activated it a second time. is gonna get back casualties. The storied past holds our future. Bonus still at five though. So it doesn't take much to kill them. Probably gonna have to kill Tamio here. All stories must end. Yeah, never really got to go off with our uh, Slither Wisp, sadly. Very close to stealing this one. Just needed the uh, land for negate one draw step sooner to get across the finish line. I guess this was a reason to still play out my land last turn, if I sail her and then draw another land. But I think at this point it doesn't matter too much. Didn't really want to fetch because we had a Night Bonder at the bottom, which was a bad draw step. But I guess playing the passage was pretty free. Alright.
Polychronos. Oh boy. Yeah, it's gonna be real difficult to recover from that. Alright. I mean, this seems like a pretty tough matchup. Most uh, Hydro Crisis decks are gonna be tough matchups. So... Still surprised we managed to hold out for this long. But uh, I think that's gonna be game over. Hits double thought ratio with the Tamiyo, for good measure. Alright, they get to check out my hand of uh, Fable Passage and attack for lethal. GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a decent hand. We've got the mana for Slither Wisp. Probably gonna hold on to the Sailor to play it after the Wisp. Robber of the Rich. Probably going to just Heartless Act it. So Want to keep the Borrower for more expensive things we can bounce. And between Galia and Robber, Robber seems the scarier threat. Heartless Act can also be awkward against a Gruul deck since you can't kill the Riot creatures like Gruul Spellbreaker, which have a plus one plus one counter sometimes. So we've got Wisp mana, but maybe we'll end up doing something different. Not a robber. I can let slide. It's gonna trigger anyways. Gets a lance. Ah, so we get our Wisp down. Good target for Tails Ends. And then I'll probably just bounce a robber. Or do I? Maybe flashing in Sailor is still better. And then next turn I can Octopus and then keep a Borrower. Alright. They hit their own Wisp. Fair enough. Don't think I'll be flashing in the borrower. Probably just gonna use it for the petty thefts. Spellbreaker I wouldn't be able to interact with. They do make it a 4 4. So then I think I'm just gonna bounce robber. Which also has reach, so it could block my. Uh, Octopus. So let's start by, I think, just playing Sailor, because maybe if I find removal for Spellbreaker, not a Brazen Bore, where I can just kill them. Hit with Octopus. 
All right, so this is two more damage. Probably going to be able to make use of the Great Shark here. Can even counter an Amber Cleave. And I'm fine jumping with the Sailors, although, of course, the Spellbreaker tramples. Does look like an Amber Cleave to me. So Cleave will cost them four mana. I guess I'll just jump here. Hmm, but if they just stomp, I guess I would still die. So maybe I'm supposed to block like this. That way I can beat stomp as well. But if they cleave me, I just kill them with a great shark and octopus anyway. Alright, and that does it. Sweet. It's a nice game against Gruul. Got to see the power of Great Shark and Slither Wisp. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. We're missing an evasive threat to go with Octopus, and we don't have much in the way of interaction. And we're up against an Umori deck, so it's going to be a creature heavy deck. Maybe the Sam's actually not good enough against an Umori deck. So we're going to need that interaction. That's Mulligan. This is better. Hopefully draw land for the Wisp next turn. Gracer is actually pretty annoying against our flying plan. Luckily, don't have any spectral sailors that need to get in for damage. Uh, not the land I was hoping for, but I'll take it. Don't think octopus is where we want to be. Doesn't really hurt to attack. Opponent takes it, in fact. Free damage. And damage does matter when you're playing a Wisp deck. So if we go for Umori, I can Tails end it. It's even unclear if I want to play the Night Bonder, because I kind of want to hold Flash spells for after the Wisp. But putting a counter on Cutthroat is probably reason enough, and hopefully we'll draw more Flash creatures later. Ah, that's good. I am tempted to let them keep Umori if they cast it here. So I can play my Slither Wisp. Charming Prince they can definitely have. Just want to get the Wisp in play as soon as possible. One top, one bottom. Sure. Do I bother attacking with the cutthroats? Don't think I do. I mean, I could bounce one of the princes or kill it if they double block. But I want to keep up Tail's End and I'm not guaranteed to draw land. Yeah, we'll pass. I could also main phase a cutthroat just to make sure I maybe hit my land drop. But I think putting an extra counter on the other cutthroat is more important when I'm only going to need two extra mana to play my other interactions this turn anyway. So the extra land's not super important. Now I could just Heartless Act Umori instead of using Tails End. Which is maybe better. 
Tails and may, might be able to counter the Uro to prevent the three life later. Although they have an empty graveyard at the moment. I think I'm just gonna cash in the Tails Ends to get a guaranteed value. They might not have more uh, legendaries coming up for some time. Can also use Tails Ends to get rid of uh, Fable Passage if they go and fetch. As a side note, but don't think that's what we need to do. I guess I scried a couple cards on the bottom that I don't necessarily want to redraw. So I'll just play my Swamp. And send in... Uh, probably only the big one. I guess Nightbonder can attack too, but just gets blocked by Grazer. Don't want to trade quite yet, since we can easily put an extra counter on it. So we'll let them jump with the Grazer if they want. I guess Octopus at the bottom would not be a terrible draw now that we have Brazen Borrower and the Gracer's gone. A Luminous Broodmoth, alright. Probably gonna start by bouncing it with the Borrower. Just because 4 mana is a lot for them to replay it. And I get to play the Borrower too. Fine, we'll fetch. I'm fine with a double block on cutthroats. It's just gonna be a chump. Take 10. Asa is totally fine. And that should be game. I could kill this too if I wanted to. Alright, sweet. So yeah, Slither Wisp, very strong inclusion. Didn't even have any games today where we got two Wisps in play at the same time, but that's when the deck really starts going off, if you can deal essentially two damage to the opponent for each spell you play, and draw two cards, then uh, you can turn the corner very quickly and kill them out of nowhere. So overall, blue-black flash, lots of ways to build it, with more counter spells, fewer counter spells, more flash creatures. There's a lot of customization, so a lot of room for uh, your own personal touch. But uh, yeah, that's going to be it for me today. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.